Hello and welcome back to goldstoptrades.com. Today we have a new and special guest with us, Abraham Drost. Abraham is CEO of Carlisle Goldfields. Carlisle can be traded as CGJ on the Toronto Stock Exchange or CGJCF on the OTC. Thanks, Abraham, for being here with us today. Well, thank you for having me, Jeb. Abraham, Carlisle Goldfields controls uh, the, the, fifth, the controls the Lynn Lake project up in Manitoba. Recently, Manitoba was ranked very high by the Fraser Institute. Could you talk to us about the significance of having an advanced stage project uh, in Manitoba? Sure, Jeb. Uh, Carlisle controls about uh, 80,000 acres in the Lynn Lake Greenstone Belt. It's a very fertile gold belt with uh, with actually five gold deposits that Carlisle controls. These are all 43-101 compliant uh, resource estimates. Uh, two of those assets are the focus of a feasibility study by our partner, uh, Arico Gold. They've committed to spend $20 million to uh, advance on feasibility and development on those two assets called Farley Lake and McClellan. But I think the fact, uh, Jeb, to your question, the fact that Arico chose to invest in Carlisle in November of 2014 you know, was Carlisle was was their top pick out of many projects they looked at around the world, and really they wanted to be in Canada and they wanted to be in Manitoba. And why? Because Manitoba is a great place to invest in mining. There's eight metal mines in production there today. Uh, our First Nations are absolutely supportive. Uh, in fact, Chief Andrew Colomb is going to be with us uh, in Toronto at the uh, at the upcoming International Mining Convention. And for Chief uh, Colomb, it's all about education and jobs. Uh, we have an agreement in place with the band and Arico, and we're moving forward together. Abraham, let's talk about the significance of this proje project that Arico came in on to partner with. Um, you released a PEA last year. Talk to us about some of the resource, the, the, the size and the grade and the economics behind this resource. Well, Jeb, to do that, I really have to go back to when I first looked at the project in uh, November of 2013. I had just come off uh, my tenure as founding CEO of Premier Royalty, which we sold to Sandstorm in October of 2013, and then I was invited to look uh, at Carlisle, and I became an investor in Carlisle in uh, December of 2013. Shortly after that, I joined the board, and then indeed on February the 1st of 2014, I became CEO of the company. And what really impressed me about uh, Carlisle and Carlisle's assets in Lynn Lake was the quality of the grade of these open pitable resources. In fact, um, the the grade of the uh, the two assets that uh, Rico Gold are looking at, which I mentioned, the uh, the uh, Farley Lake deposit and the McClellan deposit, the overall weighted average grade of that project with two pits together is 2.2 grams uh, to the mill. That's fully diluted grade. Now, that Jeb happens to be the highest open pit grade of any open pit development project in North America today. And in fact, it might be the highest grade of any open pit project producing or otherwise in North America today. Uh, so grade is extremely uh, key here. And in, in, in addition to that is infrastructure. This is an old mining camp. They mined copper nickel in the 50s and 60s. They mined gold in the 80s and 90s. Uh, the two assets I referred to that are in feasibility now, owned by Carlisle and Arico, are past producers. They each produce 200,000 ounces apiece, and they have a combined uh, resource of 1.6 million ounces measured and indicated. That's fully diluted grade, and uh, it's on its way to feasibility. We'll be in resources by Q3 of 2016. Abraham... Our Sorry, I, I meant we'll be in reserves by Q3 of 2016. Sorry. Abraham, um, we recently saw Arico come in to purchase 19.9% of Carlisle, and they also acquired a 25% ownership in the project. Talk to us about the significance of having a third party uh, company such as a, a producing. NYSE company like Arico 
to come in and make such a significant transaction with a junior mining company on the Toronto Stock Exchange? Well, the significance of that really, um, Jeb, is, is the cost of capital. I mean, for us to have raised, uh, you know, the uh, the 10.6 million in pure equity, and then the 20 million going forward that Arico has uh, has uh, undertaken to spend uh, advancing those two uh, deposits, uh, the Farley Lake and uh, McClellan, to feasibility, for us to have raised that, you know, uh, on an equity basis would have been hopelessly dilutive. So we have here with Arico, we have a deal structure that really protected the uh, the share dilution of the company, protected our existing shareholders. Uh, they bought 19.9 percent for 50 uh, for 5.6 million dollars. They took a 25 percent toehold in the asset for another 5 million dollars, total of 10.6 to the company. We don't need to raise money today. We're fully cashed up to meet our obligations over the next several years. Now, uh, but in addition to that, the 20 million to have raised that uh, from equity, you know, that's more than our market cap. That that effectively means 100% dilution. So, so really, uh, the joint venture structure was the way to go, and we spent uh, the better part of 2014 looking for the right partner. We were speaking with Arico uh, for about six months. They took a solid look at this. They remodeled all the numbers, and they eventually committed to the project, and we closed the deal in November of 2014. So... Abraham, talk to us about how Carlisle is funded for 2015. I know that you're spending capital on a bankable feasibility study, and you're also spending capital on exploration with a total of about $13 million. Um, that's pretty significant for a company that currently has a market cap around $15 million. Well, it is uh, it is significant, Jeb. And um, of that thirteen million that uh, you mentioned, Carlisle's uh, Carlisle's uh, spend and uh, Carlisle's share of that is two million. So our joint venture partner Rico is spending eleven million next year, of which nine million goes into advancing feasibility, and the other two million goes on to expiration, uh, matched by two million from Carlisle to for a total of four million in expiration on the balance of the property. Abraham, there's many companies that say, junior companies that say they're going to make it to production, uh, but very few do. Can you give us an uh, understanding of what differentiates Carlisle, that it has a pretty good shot at getting into production here? Simply this, Jeb, that Arico are in it to build it. My understanding is they looked at over 60 projects before they settled on Carlisle's assets, and uh, they're in it to build it. They weren't here just to make uh, to create a feasibility study and walk away. They see an asset that can add to their resource base ultimately, and they want to earn in. And my sense is that they want to develop this on a fast track basis. And Arico's represented on the board and on the on the technical team. Yes, they have two uh, two uh, members on the board of directors. Uh, their uh, chief operating officer Peter Mc Peter McPhail and their senior vice president Chris Richter sitting on our board. Um, Carlisle in turn has two members on the four member uh, management team on the feasibility study. So we we effectively uh, supervise that process as budgets are presented, and we jointly approved uh, that nine million dollar budget for 2015 to go uh, pure calendar 2015 to go purely into feasibility. Then, in addition, we approved a $4 million budget jointly funded on which uh, Carlisle is the operator. We presented the budget, and it was jointly approved by Carlisle and Arico. Abraham, in conclusion, we've seen a lot of M&A activity uh, in Canada, uh, Rainy River, Probe, uh, Premier just did a deal. Um, could you talk to us about the recent increase in M&A activity uh, I, I know you've had experience with that before. Uh, you've come uh, to Carlisle. And where does Carlisle fit in uh, to these projects? How, do they, how, do they, how does it compare uh, from a fundamental standpoint to some of these recent valuations that these companies have received after they've been taken over? 
Well, Karloff's challenge really is that uh, it, the economics on this project, which were released in February of 2014, came out after the crash in the gold market. So, in other words, it really it's almost a case where you know if you had value, you you uh, you you know it, lo- it you slow it, you know for any of the. Uh, uh, the companies like Premier, you mentioned, uh, even the mid tiers and seniors, uh, they've lost ground. We've all lost ground in the sector over the last three years. Uh, I think we've put in a bottom here. Uh, recently, we saw the window open a bit. We saw, you know, a three hundred million dollar finance uh, financing going to Premier with uh, Centera. We saw the probe takeout by Goldcorp. At, uh, for half a billion dollars. Uh, in those cases, the ounces uh, at, in play there were valued at uh, between one and two hundred dollars. Um, you know, as you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, New Gold is developing the Rainy River asset. Um, you know, Canada's hot, and um, and the reason it's hot is in part is because it's obviously a safe jurisdiction. Um, you know, you have the advantage of the exchange rate, uh, 80 cent Canadian dollar right now. It was at par not that long ago. So really at 80 cents, you have a 1.25 multiple uh, to your um, U.S. dollars to translate into Canadian dollars. And, uh, you know, so so guys like Arico are pretty happily producing gold at Young Davidson at $1,500 plus an ounce. But if you look at Manitoba, um, you go one step further, it has the cheapest power costs in the world. Nobody can touch them. And you combine, you know, and you, when you start thinking that power costs are 30 to 50% of your operating costs, that makes a huge dif- difference, even over Ontario. So, you know, in my books uh, and many others, uh, Manitoba is the place to be in Canada, and I think Arico recognized that, and uh, certainly that had to be part of their decision-making process. Abraham Dross, CEO of Carlisle Goldfields, which can be traded as CGJ on the TSX and as CGJCF on the OTC. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Well, thanks, Jeb. I appreciate it.